This course is called Introduction to IT. That's if you are doing computer science, if you are doing IT as your course. Then it's called Computer Literacy if you are doing computer science as your program. Then I expect to be joined by other students from other disciplines. That is Faculty of Arts. I don't know if we have them online yet. So if you are among us, those ones from Faculty of Arts, it is called Computer Literacy, Computer Applications. Then if you also belong to Faculty of Education, maybe today they haven't joined us yet. It is still called Computer Applications. So this course introduces us to computers, to computing in general, not, not, not necessarily computers. Just like if you can see what has been happening in the world, computers have become inevitable. They are part of our lives. Of course, they have been even before COVID, but at least COVID proved it to us that we need to keep going even amid whichever challenges or circumstances that come our way. So when I'm teaching this course, I always expect or I always assume that I'm dealing with people who have never attended the class before, that is in computing. Though many of you by now, it is assumed that you've already done it in the previous classes or elsewhere. Maybe if you're upgrading, maybe you've gone to university somewhere and then you are trying to upgrade. Before I may continue, do you have people who have not used, who have not studied this course before elsewhere by show of hands? Maybe. No one has raised their hand. You don't know either. By the way, do we have issues with using Zoom? In case people don't, in case you don't know how to use Zoom, for example. Okay. That is raising up your hand, using the chat, all other basic features of Zoom. I don't know if there are people who have challenges using Zoom. Of course, starting, I think from the previous three semesters we've had, we have always been allowed to use a blended approach to learning. That is both online and face-to-face. -face. And then under certain circumstances, it has always been inevitable that we are only allowed to operate online, especially when the president gave a directive on the closure of institutions for face-to-face. -face. So now that we've been allowed to operate whichever way we want, either online or physical, we shall always be using any of the two, depending on which circumstances, okay? So in other words, if I feel that like there is need for us to use online, we shall always use online. If I feel we need to, to meet physical, we shall always do the same. So, get ready for any of the two, depending on the situation or circumstances. Mm, the course, like I said, is called Introduction to IT, Stroke Computer Literacy. And this is our menu for this course. For us in IT, we do this course once in your entire period of stay at Indeji, okay? Meaning it is for strictly one semester. This course is both practical and the theory. The theory is going to introduce us to the, to the terminologies, to the key concepts in computing. Then the practical will take us through the applications and specifically our emphasis will be on office applications. So in summary, we shall start with looking at the course overview, which I'm going to look at today. Then after the course overview, we shall look at the general introduction to computers. From the general introduction to computers, we shall look at, of course, under that, we shall look at what, for example, what a computer is, the components of a computer, we shall look at hardware and software and all those other basics what to look at before buying a computer and so on. The, the basic use of a computer, ETC, ETC. And then after, after that, 
we shall engage gears and look at networks and internet. By now, I guess we all know what internet is and what a network is. But in case we didn't know anything about a network, you don't have to worry because we are going to look at it in details. Then from the other, I shall look at files and folders. Then after that, we shall look at viruses and how to, come, how to protect our computers against viruses. Then from there, we shall look at briefly, we shall look at computer economics. And when we talk about economics, I'll be looking at the do's and don'ts, how to protect ourselves while working with computers, that is health wise. Because in most cases, you think that much as these computers are good, but of course they come with so many other health related issues. That's why sometimes when someone sits on the computer, the whole day, maybe by the end of the day, they are feeling out of headache, maybe they are feeling like as if their site is not working very well and so on and so forth. So shall look at, shall look at how can we protect ourselves against all those other hazards that are associated with the use of electronic component and specifically computers. Then from there, we shall dive into office and we shall specifically put our all emphasis on Microsoft Office application suit, okay? And within that suit, we have a number of packages such as MS Word, shall look at PowerPoint, shall look at Excel. If time allows, we might as well maybe briefly look at access and the publisher. But in most cases, because of the time, because of the schedule that is tight, I always put more emphasis on the most commonly used application. Specifically, why I don't always put emphasis on access, which is database application is because in most cases, there are more other sophisticated programs that are designed to process databases such as MySQL and so many other applications. And in, the, in, and in, the, in this case, since you are IT stroke computer science students, it is assumed, actually it's not just assumed, but you'll be looking at other modules or course needs such as database design and management, where you'll be working with database tools, okay? database tools that are more sophisticated. Then for the case of other people who are not doing this course that is IT and computer science, that is those, especially those from other faculties. Because access is not nowadays so much used because of the availability of other sophisticated programs, I always don't put much emphasis on it. And in any case, usually in a serious organization, there are other people, there are some, there is some that is specifically designed who is specifically employed to work with databases as a database administrator or database manager that has all the necessary skills and the tools that are up to date in managing databases. Then of course, shall look at the groceries and conclusions. Then before I forget, first of all, I will start by welcoming you to Indiana University. And then also to this course, that is introduction to IT, stroke computer literacy, stroke computer applications. When I talk about a course, ladies and gentlemen, what am I trying to mean? A course means, for example, what, what I'm teaching right now. For example, you have communication skills, it's a course. We have ethics, it's a course, and so many others. So whenever I talk about a course, I'll be referring to this specific module. Sometimes people for, confuse between a program and a course. The other big one is a program which has specific courses. Then when we talk about assessment, ladies and gentlemen, there are different forms of assessment. Let me talk about them briefly before we can move on. This is what we call continuous assessment and then end of semester assessment, which is called the final exam for the semester. So in the final exam for the semester, that exam will contribute 60%. Whereas continuous assessment, which sometimes is called the coursework, contributes 40%. 
This coursework can take any of the forms, such as take home, okay? Unfortunately, usually sometimes people think that when we talk about coursework, we are referring to the take home only. No, anything can be a coursework, okay? I can just choose to give you a quiz. I can choose to give you a test as the coursework, okay? Or any other form of assessment that I feel like. Now, we look at university standards and university learning, you will find that while you are in high school, you did so many tests and assignments and exams. For example, in, for, in A level, a paper like, for example, maybe if you did economics, you find you did almost every week you were doing a test in that subject or an exam in that subject. Unfortunately, or fortunately, that score, each score you got ended there. It didn't reflect on the final certificate or pass slip. With university standards, however, whichever assignment you are given is final. Why? Because it will contribute a mark to your final grade. Hence, it will contribute to what will be on your transcript. So if you want to have a clean transcript, start today, okay? For whichever course you need or whichever course you are doing, start today, you are getting me? Then also, besides that, if you want to get a first class and you get a retake, just one retake in a paper, any paper you get a retake, that retake will fall you up to the grave, okay? Because it will be on your transcript and will, wherever you take that document, they will always be able to say, so and so got a retake. And there are basic papers that you shouldn't get a retake in, such as this one here. So please take it serious, work hard. Even if it means one mark, if, you are, if I give you an assignment and it's, and it's going to be marked out of five, okay? Try as much as possible to perform to your best. Why? Because for example, if you, if you have a 49 minus just one mark, or you have a 59, minus that mark, or a 64, minus that mark, which can give you a 65. That alone is enough to change your grade. So please, whichever assignment you are given, take it final because it will follow up to your grave, your grave, because it will contribute to your transcript, the grade on your transcript. And unfortunately, once you get even a single retake in your, in your course, however much you get all other units, However best you perform in all other units, you'll never get a first class. That's if you are looking at getting a first class. I've already talked about assignment. Then this time around, I think our exam, our mid-semester assessments, which we, which we are calling courseworks or tests, are likely to be online, okay? Actually, they are going to be online. And assignment I'm going to give, it will be online through the Odell system or platform. So in case you've not visited it, try going there in case you didn't know the, in case you didn't know the link, it is dwells at university.ac.ug. And once you get there on the platform, of course, it will ask you to log in so by now you should be able to contact the relevant offices to ensure that you are registered on the online portal for e-learning. Then once you get there, of course, there are different faculties, choose your faculty and then the semester you are in, then you'll be able to see the different courses that are done in that particular semester and, and most likely all the notes are there as well. So to get started, like I said that we are starting with the course overview. Look at this course, it's introducing us to computers, okay? And how computers work. Just in case you didn't know what a computer is, or if, if you've never worked with a computer before, at least by the end of this course, you'll be having good exposure with computers. Then from there, I'll go to the features, and applications 
of computers, the different application programs we have on the computers. Then how we can work with these computers, how we can manage them, how we can handle these computers, okay? All of those are part of the package in this course. Then using other related gadgets, okay? To not only process information, but also share information, to search for information, to document information, so that you're able to, to have what we call a digital environment where you, you're able to communicate digitally. To start with, why we are here as students is partly because of, actually not just partly, but we are here because of information. Why? Or what am I, to, what am I trying to mean? It is because you got information that we are, there's a universe called Indege that you were able to apply. It's because you had, you had that there's a university, that Indege University courses are starting, are starting on, such an, on such a date. That's why you are able to do it, to be present. Then why are you in this class specifically at this time, not other people? Because you've got information that there's going to be a class at two. So in other words, the life we live, everywhere we live, is dependent on information. There are four, that is why you as managers of information, those that are doing IT stroke computer science, you are going to be the custodians of information in the organizations you are going to work. So because if organizations survive or depend on information, they need people who are specialists in managing, in processing, in storing information. So that's what you are going to do at the end of your three year or four year program. Now, if I may move on, I will start by asking the class, what you know about a computer in terms of definition? The platform is open. By the way, my classes are always student-centered whereby I expect more from you. I expect you to participate more, okay? And then personally, I don't, ex I don't, don't expect much from me. And then something I forgot to tell you in case you were not briefed is that at university, learning is not the way we used to learn at high school whereby you are spoon fed. What do I mean by this? We are all adults. None of us is below 18 years of age, okay? So we know why we came. Each one of us knows why they came to the university and they know what they want. So at university, you will find that at most, someone who is going to give you much will not go beyond 40%. That is the assumption. Much as sometimes some people end up spoon feeding you. Okay, so that means that at university learning is research based. So you can carry out research on anything that you are told. Educating me, so I expect that please, whenever we, whenever I hit on something, move an extra mile, go and research about it. Then, yes, okay, let's move on. Now I'm asking members, tell me what they know about computing, what computer is, first of all, in the first place. You can turn on your microphone or you can raise up your hand. In case you want to tell us something about, about what a computer is, please, you can turn on your microphone. Let me ask, I'll, I'll be picking, maybe if I don't get any feedback from the audience, I'll be randomly selecting you to speak. So let me start with who? Katebe Pius. Pius, can you turn on your microphone yes. and speak to us? Yes. Yes, good afternoon. What is the point of your understanding? Uh, it is anything that can process, uh, that accepts input, processes it, and then produces output. That's according to Katebe. Thank you very much. In the balance, Maria Agnes. 
can you unmute? By the way, in my classes, always be on standby. If you plan to turn on your mic to log in and just move away, you get embarrassed. Always be on standby because I just need to do some things. Maria, I just a computer. A computer is an electric. Yes, Agnes. I think you only have a problem. Electronic programming. Uh, a computer is an information process. Hello? Yes, you need to A computer is an electronic programming machine. It's not clear. A computer is an electronic programmable machine for information processing. Okay. Thank you very much. Let me pick another person. She can wear food. Yes, Andre, can you speak to us? Andre, can you hear me? He's absent. Andre is absent. Okay, okay, Cho. Collins. Which should that my voice sit down to the Andre? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay, let me see what I can do. Is my voice now better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, can you continue? Computer. Yes. A computer Continue. Is, we are getting. A computer is an electric programmable machine that is used to input data and processes it information. Okay. Thank you very much. By the way, in my class, there are no wrong answers. Okay. Sometimes people fear to speak, thinking that thinking that. They are going to be, to be left at, but we all come here to study and to learn. I assure that we all don't know anything, including myself, so we all came to study, okay? So don't fear to say anything. Otherwise, if you keep with it, you don't know whether it is right or not. So always feel free to share whichever you have or whichever you know. So the subtopics and the introduction, and the general introduction, look at, we shall look at the general introduction before. Then the parts of a computer, categories of computers, software and hardware, devices, and there, if we are to buy any device, what do you look at before buying a computer, for example, for buying a, a mobile phone, before buying a laptop, before buying a camera, etc, etc. So we need to know all of these. And then from there, shall look at the, the technologies that are key while working with computers. So we can get started with the general introduction. We have already defined what a computer is, but before defining what a computer is, we are looking at computer literacy because our intention of being in this class is to become literate, okay, in as far as computing is concerned. So in other words, with computer literacy, we are looking at acquiring knowledge and understanding of computers and their uses. Meaning at the end of this course, in case you are completely illiterate, illiterate as of now, by the end of this course, you will have transited from being an illiterate to being a computer literate. So that is what computer literacy is, knowledge and understanding of computers and their uses. Then, Defining a computer, like you've already put it, 
this is an electronic device. I emphasize the word electronic. Okay. Sometimes some people call it electric. You know, there's a difference between something being electronic and something being electric. For example, you look at a iron, an iron box. It is electric, it uses electricity, but it's not electronic. Okay. We have fridges. I'm, I'm sure, of course, there it could be it could be that there are those that are electronic, but most of the fridges we use are just electric. You can think of anything else. These normal bulbs, they are electric because they use electricity, but I don't think that many of them are electronic and so on. So that's why I'm saying that mark that keyword electronic. Hence, in our definition, we are saying that. This is a device, this is an electronic device that accepts data, okay? Processes it into information, outputs information and stores results, okay? Now, from that, we have again encountered some other concepts such as data, such as information which is which first things first okay let's look at each one of them let's start with the data what is data class remember my class is always student 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 centered i expect more from you than you should expect from myself nature you harriet speak to us data is unprocessed information okay like Data is unprocessed facts. Hello? Okay. Data is unprocessed. Yes, we can hear you. Naturally, now we, we have already got what you said. Okay. Let me ask another person. We have somebody by name of Winnie Namigade. Let me get it. Can you turn on your mic and speak to us? Yes, let me get it. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, speak to us about what data is. Data is a stored information. That that is data is uh, if data is information that is extracted from the from from information. Okay, that's her opinion. Thanks for trying. Mm, let me ask somebody else. Egesa Andrew. Egesa Andrew, can you turn on your microphone and speak? Egesa. I think Egesa is not present. So you have lost today's attendance mark. Okay. Nano le me bumu wanguzi. Mebo, can you speak to us? Mebo, can you speak to us? Nano le me bumu wanguzi. Can you speak to us? Okay, she's absent. So we like, just like it has been put by the first the first participant. When you talk about data, we're looking at unprocessed facts. Okay. Facts that have no meaning. Okay. For example, if I may, let me see. Okay, let me open some file here. For example, if I may write something like this, which, what have I typed on the screen, members? If you may see my screen, what have I typed on the screen? 554 numbers. What does, it, what does that mean? 
Nothing. It okay. has no that, meaning. It has no meaning. Okay. That is data. Data refers to raw facts that have no context, that have no meaning. That is data. Because I don't, for example, if I write, let me write another. Okay. I have written something else on the screen. Who can tell me what that means? Again. Twenty-one. What does it mean according to you? It's like a year. Are you sure? Hmm. Yes. Sir. Colin has told us that it means a year. So, okay, someone has said that it means a year. How about if I said that maybe 2,021 20, dogs, for example, like that? Will I be wrong? No, you're not. No, you're, you're not wrong, no. but it has no meaning. Maybe I could say 2,021 bricks, okay? Yeah. Like that. So in other words, data is just. It could be in form of text, it could be in form of numbers, in form of audio, in form of pictures. I can just come up with a picture, maybe I throw a picture on the screen. Which picture has no meaning attached to it? Meaning, if, if somebody comes across it, they won't be able to come to a conclusion regarding that picture. So that's what we are trying to mean when we talk about data then we are also talking about information which we've said that information refers to what have we said it is information is processed data uh-huh information is processed data now when you look at data we have said that it has no context just numbers text images sound ETC, okay? For example, if I'm a journalist, assuming I'm a journalist, and I'm going to the field to collect information, collect something about what is happening, okay? My data could be in form of images, in this case, or videos, video clips, which I need to assemble and create a story, which story has meaning in it, okay? If I may, maybe I'm in charge of managing students' records, I could be having people, I could be having maybe some pe people's names, then I could be having some numbers. But what does the number mean? Is this somebody's age? Is this somebody's how much they have paid in terms of tuition? Is it the grade they, they got in the previous class? ETC. You're getting me? Well, as with information, we're looking at processed data with context, with value addition. That, that information which is summarized, organized and analyzed, upon which we can draw conclusions and make decisions. That is what we call information. At the end of it, of it all, information should be used to inform decisions, to support decision making. For example, look at this class how big it is, okay? And decide what to do. Should I, for example, should I give them a test so that they can, it can attract more to show up for classes? You are getting me. Should What should I do? Should I go physical? Maybe they are facing challenges and they can't log in. That's what we are calling information. Something that can be used to, to make a decision or to support decision making. Now, when we go back to, um, I want us to go back to what a computer is. In our definition of a computer, ladies and gentlemen, we said an electronic device that captures information, that processes information, that uh, stores information, that uh, disseminates information. Now, the question is, 
When you look at that definition, or according to your own thinking, what are the basic functions of a computer? Yes, the platform is open for members to participate. My class is always like that. A computer stores. A computer does what? Just to store information. Okay, according to Collins, a computer stores information. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, Sherry. A computer inputs, outputs, and stores information into processed form. Okay, that's according to Sherry. Yes, Serena. Serena, can you speak to us? Your microphone is really on. It is used for data analysis. Okay, it's used for that's according to Nami Gande. Okay, that's have you. We have Victor Moses online. Victor Moses, can you speak to us? Computer processed information into useful data. Uh -huh. Sorry? Computer. Computer processed information into useful data. Okay. Thank you very much. We have who hasn't said anything. There is this person here with funny name, 11 or something like that. I don't know who he is. He forgot to rename. Let me rename him. Which name should I give him? I don't know. Can I want each one of us to use Syria? That is your real name because at the end of it all, if you don't use your real names, it might cost you. Okay, so let's always use our real names. There's another person called Six. I don't know what Six means. Whether it's his real name. When I'm making some evaluation or some assessment, I will be based on the name. A computer, a computer can be used to store information. Okay. So in other words, there are so many functions a computer can do. Okay. There are so many functions. Okay. But I remember when while, while I was in high school, actually not high school, I think it was in P4, I was taught about, among other subjects, science. And in science, they taught us, they taught us about an insect, okay? So my teacher told me that an insect has three body parts, which up now I contest. You're getting me? Because me, I see so many parts on an insect, including the compound eyes, the antenna, the abdomen, the spiracle, the so many other parts, the wings, etc. Now, similarly, when you got a computer, okay, it has what we call basic functions, just like we're going to look at the basic the basic components of a computer, okay. So in, in terms of the functions, there are about five. First of all, the number one is input, okay? Regardless of what you are doing on the computer, you'll be entering or inputting data, okay? Using input devices or components such as keyboard, such as mouse, such as joystick, such as touch screen and so on, okay? Then ne the next component of a computer is processing, okay? That is transforming what has been entered into something meaningful. That's another basic function of a computer. In, that is processing. And with the processing, it means transforming the input into meaningful information. Then after that, we have another function, which is called storage. A computer, among other things, 
stores information and data on its memory. When you talk about memory, we have what we call internal memory and external memory, inbuilt memory and external memory. Okay. It among other memories, we have what we call RAM, like we are going to see later on. We have the internal hard disk. Okay. We have the other storage components, which are external, such as CDs, such as memory card, such as flash disks, such as external hard drive, and so on, and as well as cloud storage. Then after stor storing information, we have what we call output as another function, okay? It outputs information in, in different forms. For example, it can be output on paper using the output component called the printer. It can be used, it can, it, it can output using, for example, the monitor as another component for outputting information. It can output using, for example, a projector. Right now I'm outputting, I don't have a projector, okay? I'm having my laptop, the screen, so that you're able to see and share with me what I have on my screen. And so many other components that can be used. We can also output using, for example, speakers, if it is in form of sound, okay? So all those are components among us today, output components, all those are some of the examples we can give. I think I've already talked about input, processing, storage, output. And then another one is dissemination among its other functions of a computer to disseminate information and the data using what we call networks, okay? Right now I'm also disseminating information so that wherever I am right now, I'm at, at my home, but I'm able to disseminate what I have with me. And it's going through the networks, okay? Using what you call telecommunications networks, okay? It, it, we could also be using emails. We could be using all other forms of systems in place to disseminate information. So in summary, those are the five basic functions. I'm highlighting and underlining and making the word, the word basic, okay, bold. Because the other function, okay, if you are category, for example, some would say that it's used for typing a letter, another one said that it is used for playing music, another one said that it is used for, but we're talking about the basic functions, okay? So those are the basic functions of a computer. Moving on, by the way, before I move on, any, any challenges, any questions, any supplement, any deductions, any complaint, you know, as far as what we've talked about is concerned? Silence means everything is okay. Um, so I have a question. Yes. So, so to disseminate spread information, right? Your network is breaking. Can you hear me? Better now. Okay, so you use the word to what disseminate? Yes. So to disseminate would be to spread the information, right? Yes. Continue with your question. Are you sorted? No, I, so I, just, I just need to clarify that word. That is the only question I have. Yeah. Any other question? Yes, Victor Moses, your microphone is on. And nothing, just it unmuted itself. It can't unmute itself. Okay, so let's move on. So we were talking, at, we, are, we are looking at data versus information with examples. For example, we have that number there in form of data that is 51007. Okay. 
which we are saying that we can organize it into information that can mean different things. For example, someone can look at it in form of a date, another one in form of maybe somebody's salary, another one in form of a zip code, okay? Depending on how it has been processed. But if we leave it the way it was in, in its raw form, it would mean nothing at all, okay? Why? Because no meaning has been attached to it. Then moving on, we have talked about information and the data, okay? Then we're talking about, let's look at information system. What is an information, but even before looking at an information system, let's break it into different parts. That is, we have information and then system. Fortunately, we have already looked at what information is, and by now we know. Now, how about a system? What is a system, ladies and gentlemen? Mbira. Some of the by names of Mbira should tell us what they know about a system. Um, a system is like a set of devices that inputs, outputs, and stores information and data. Oh, okay. So we're defining not a computer system, but a system in general terms. Mm, whom should I ask? Let me see somebody who has not said anything. I think it's mm. something that uh, it's something that uh, brings things to work together to attend in a certain activity. Okay. Thank you very much. Nacha, you never read. You want to say something? A system is a set of interrelated elements working together in a way to achieve a set of objectives. Okay. Thank you very much. Maria Agnes, you want to say something? Say it. A system is a collection of elements or components that are, that are organized for a common purpose. Okay, thank you very much. Now, examples of systems, can I list them? Any system you know of? Ladies and gentlemen? The respiratory system. The? The respiratory system. Okay. Respiratory system, very good. What else, ladies and gentlemen? Which other system do you know of? Have you heard of? Have you seen before? Nasali Victor. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, give us an example of a system you know of. Uh, as in computer system or? In, we are looking at it in a generic form. In a? Oh, Andrew has talked about the solar system in the chat. Okay, we have expiratory system. Okay, expiratory system, very good. We have a telephone system. Okay, we can even have a computer system, etc. etc. They are different. In other words, when we talk about a system, we are looking at a group of or a set of interrelated components so when i say yes yeah sorry what are you saying okay we move on so i was saying that when talking about a system you're looking at a set of interrelated components that work hand in hand to achieve or to accomplish a given task for example, if you want to have food turned into blood, there are different components that work on that food, including the stomach and some other components. If you want to have the car 
if you want to get to Kampala from wherever you are, we have that car, that system of a car, okay? It has different components, including the tires, including the engine, including so many other components. Each one of them plays a certain task contributing to, to getting you to Kampala, okay? Then you can think of anything else. The education system, it has different components, okay? That work hand in hand to ensure that illiteracy is pushed out of a country and so on and so forth. Now, moving on, we are defining an information system. What is it? Yes, I'm waiting to hear from you. I'm waiting for somebody to say something. Dero. Can Dero speak to us? Is Dero present? Okay, Pius. Pius, can you speak to us? Sorry. Uh, an information system. Yes, Pius, continue. Yes, sorry. Yes, what is an information system? Um, uh, an information system is a set of components that are used to convey information. Unfortunately, I can't get anything from your side. You are too sweet for, being, for this. Yes? Yes, can you hear me now? Better. Okay. Pass, are you with your girlfriend? Your voice is too soft, it's too low. <laughs> Tell her to give you some space so that you're able to, to be with us. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, better. You are speaking like a gentleman now. Yes, Pius, continue. Yes, now uh, they are just a set of components. Hello? Yes, continue. We yes, we are, we are a set of components that uh, accept input and, and produce output. Okay. Mm. That's according to Pius. Yeah, yeah, a set, not just one but many, more like okay. a chain link. Okay, thank you. That's according to, yes, somebody else with, some, with something different. We have somebody by names of Six has raised up his hand. I don't know whether Six is your real yeah. name. An information system is a system that collects, uh, stores, and uh, distributes oh, okay. information. Before going on, before there's a lot of noise in your background. There's a lot of noise. Now I'm clear. Hello? A lot of noise in your background. I've turned off your microphone. Oh. Let me turn my side because. Okay, I've turned off all microphones. Okay, so we have we have looked at what a system is, and when talk about an information system, we're looking at a set of components that work hand in hand to collect data, process it into information, store the information, disseminate the information, and retrieve the 
information. Then we have got what we call types of information system systems. Mm, I may not need to look at, at it now. However, those doing IT, there is another course I'm taking you through for the fundamentals of information systems. So shall have to look at it in details. However, for those that are not doing this course, oh, you can as well go ahead to investigate more about the different types of information systems and the roles information systems play in the management of an organization. Then moving on, Moving on. Oh, we have already talked about this. So I've talked about the basic functions of a computer, which is what we are seeing on the screen again. That's input processing, output storage, communication or dissemination. Then think we have data. We've talked about data, okay? Literally anything on planet Earth can be measured, okay? And each one of the, each one of anything you can think of has units of measurement. While I was in S1, they taught us about S1 units, which some people call the SI units. Okay. What did it mean by then while you were in senior one? I think it was in one of the subjects. I don't recall the subject. Is it physics or English? Which subject was it? Which subject was it, class? You can now unmute, I've allowed for unmuting. I disabled it before. Am I speaking to people? Physics. Physics. What does it mean? What did it mean? S S1 units or SI units? What what were what were they trying to talk about? Standard units. Standard units. What do they mean exactly? What are standard units anyway? Okay, let's not go into that for today. Now, just like you can measure sugar, you can measure what else? Matoke, you can measure meat, you can measure anything, think of it, okay? Similarly, we can as well measure data, okay? Now, what are the out are what are the basic units or what are these units of measurement of data? What are these units we use to measure data? Let me start with the most basic. What is the basic unit of data called? A byte. Someone has said that it's called a byte. I don't know. Yes, I can see from the chat. Someone has talked about byte, another one bytes. Okay. Yes, other members, what do you say? What do other members say? The basic unit of measurement of data. What is it called? Some yes, said it's called a megabyte. Gigabyte. Another one has called it a gigabyte. Okay. Let's all give our opinions. Feel free. Okay. Rebecca said it's called a byte. Yes, I'm waiting for other members. 
Each one of us should say something. If you can't use the microphone, you can use the chat to give your opinion. Mm, the basic unit is a bite. Okay. Then when I look at the chat, Pius has said it's called a beat. Okay. Now, by the way, what do we mean by data? We have already defined what data is. How about when you might when you want to surf the internet and you dial star 175 star something ash on airtel or star 160 star is it too harsh or when you dial star 165 and select data what are you buying are you buying raw facts what are you dying what are you buying we are time you are buying airtime no i mean if you want to surf the internet do you buy airtime to surf the internet Bundles. It, you are buying what? Bundles. Okay, bundles. I can see the chat. You are buying data. That's according to Rebecca. Mm, another one, six, I said that you are buying data. Which is which? Other members, what do you buy? to surf the internet, what do you load to surf the internet? Do you load airtime, do you load data, do you load what, what do you load? You load MBs. You load MBs. 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 Oh, okay, so you load megabytes. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, now. So uh, that's why I said at the end of this course, we shall be, we shall transit from computer illiterates to computer literates. Mm, some people have thought about data, others, MBs, others. So what is data in the first place? Those that say that we buy data, what is data? From what we've looked at at the beginning, is it beginning, beginning, which is which? Okay, so when you are buying, someone has talked about internet bundles, okay? So we are not buying data in the first place, okay? We are not buying data because data are raw facts. We are not buying raw facts. We are buying internet bundle, a bundle that can allow us surf the internet that's what we are buying we aren't buying data okay because in any case that are just raw facts things which are useless meaningless now then other people have talked about mbs what are mbs who can tell us what mbs are what we mean by mbs megabytes yeah, and what are megabytes Uh -huh. A megabyte is a million of one bit. Okay, it's a million of one bit. Okay, we shall anyway, we shall get there. So you will find you will find that, for example, personally, I last bought a bundle. Last month, after it's expiring tomorrow, I've remembered. I last bought last month. And I've been using every day, including watching videos, including even Zoom meetings, including so many things. Okay. Well, I bought it. It was not in MBs. Otherwise, if it was in MBs, it would have expired. It was, it would be depleted, I think, maybe in the first one day. Okay, it was in gigabytes. I bought about 50. Okay, meaning different people have different rates of consumption. Not all people buy 
megabytes or MBs. Okay, but they are buying a bundle to serve the internet. Therefore, different people buy different volumes of internet bundles so that they're able to surf the internet. So that means that depending on the package you've bought, that's, it determines how much data you can either upload or download. We have what's called upstream and downstream communication, okay? So depending on the volume, it will determine how much can be either downloaded or uploaded or both. So we can measure data, okay? Meaning we can measure how much you are either uploading or downloading. So we have different units of measurement. And from what somebody has said, just like when you are measuring sugar, we have the best, the smallest, for example. In, if you are buying sugar, what's the smallest you can buy from the shop? I guess we've all bought sugar one day. Each one of us has ever bought sugar one day. Yes, let somebody tell us. A quarter. A quarter. Okay, thank you very much. A quarter. Now, just like you can, actually we can even measure in terms of grams if you have to buy sugar. One gram, two grams, 10 grams, 250 grams is what we are calling quarter, okay? Then half kilo, that is 500 grams. 1,000 grams, which you call a kilo gram. Then you can talk about a ton, okay? Then from a ton, we have metric ton and so on and, for, and so forth. So metric ton is the equivalent of a, an MOB. A kilo, not a kilo, mm, a ton, which we call 1,000 kilograms, okay? So we're talking about kilogram, grams, kilograms, mm, tons, metric tons, and so on. Similarly, we can as well measure data, starting with the most basic, which we call a bit, okay? What is a bit? in full. So when we talk about a bit, be first thing what it is, a bit is the smallest unit of measurement of data, okay? Just in, in the case you're asked what a bit is, it's the smallest unit of measurement of data. Now, what is a bit in full because when I speak, when I say a bit, it is in short. What is it in full? I've, I've already said it's, I've already defined it, that it's the best, or it's the smallest thing to measurement of data. Now, what is it in full? What is a bit in full, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I think it binary is a binary digit. It's a? Binary digit. Okay, binary digit. Now, we are breaking it in two different man manageable components. Binary digit is the basic or it's the smallest unit of measurement of data. What does the word binary, by the way, there's something I forgot to tell you at the, at the onset. Most of the terms we use in computing are borrowed terms. They get their meaning from the English meaning. Just like the word computer, it comes from the word compute, which means to calculate. So this device or this component or this thing, this box we see, it was initially designed to help in calculating and carrying out complex calculations to make them simple. 
right from the word computer, everything, most of the terms we use are borrowed terms from the normal meaning. Now, they're talking about binary digit. What does, what does the word binary mean? What does binary mean? Uh, binary, basically, it involves two things. Binary means but two. Okay. Binary means what? Two. Okay. Now, what is this two all about? What does it mean? Yes, somebody wants to say something? Okay. So we can move on. Binary means two. So what are they trying to mean by binary? How does it come into computing is the question. How does two or binary come into computing? Who can tell us, who can try to explain to us? Yes, I'm waiting. Sharing information. Sharing information. Sure. That's according to him. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Who else wants to say something? I think it involves combining two things to, to data to make a useful information. Yeah. Okay, that's according to her. Yes, somebody else wants to tell us something? Okay. No one has something to add what we have said about binary okay now um, in english are you listening to me ladies and gentlemen the english language has what we call a diction do you know what the word diction mean I don't think I'm with people. I'm saying the English language has its diction. Okay? Are you getting me? A diction refers to Okay, I have muted him. Okay, so the, the English language has what we call a diction, a set of words, or a collection of what, where the word dictionary comes from. Okay, now a computer also has its C diction okay in the computer diction there are two placeholders okay am i clear what what do i mean by this okay in the english in its diction its diction of the english of the the diction of the english is derived from 26 letters, what we call the alphabet, from A to Z, okay? The Luganda diction is derived from 25 letters. That is from A, from A to Z, but minus, they don't have CHU in Luganda, what else they don't they have? They don't, they also don't have X in Luganda. Okay. Meaning 20 minus 2 is 24, but they have another one called Dinga. How about the Runyoro or the Rutoro or the Ruchiga or the Rugbara? What's their diction? Let us share experiences before I can move on. If you come from any any other region other than the two I've talked about. Share with us. When I talk about Luganda, for example, they don't have anything, any word which starts with the X. They don't have any word which starts with the CHU. Okay? 
Now, let's show, how about those from Busoga? All those from wherever you're coming from, share with us. Members are absent on this. Okay. If you're absent on this, let me continue. Mm. So computer has two placeholders, okay? Its diction has two placeholders. That's a one and a zero. In its diction, there are only two letters, okay? That is a one and a zero. What does this mean? Look at the power button of your computer if you have a computer. Look at the power button of your mobile phone. I guess we all have mobile phones. Look at the power button of your TV. Look at the power button of any gadget that you have. We look at that button, it has an icon. That icon is in the form of a zero and a one in within the zero. I guess you must have noticed that before not so members. Kate, are you hearing me? I don't know whether people get whether people are with me. Yeah. Yes. So, but smartphones don't yes. have smartphones don't do what? Don't have it. Don't have a zero and that's the one. No, just look at it critically, you will see. Yes, I'm with you. If you look look at it critically, you will see. Now, we move on. So, somebody is saying something on the chat. Let me check. Somebody has said that I have, I have seen it. Okay. Now, what does it mean? A computer or any other device that is digital is in one of the two states. Okay. That is, it is either on or off. Where one means on and the two means off. That's why even that power button is like that. Meaning you can either turn on or turn off using that power button. Okay. So that it actually its language is also a series of ones and zeros. Two. It has two placeholders, a computer. Just like however big a book in English will be, even if it is thousands or millions of pages, those thousands of pages will be derived from just 26 characters. The same thing applies to the computer. Much as for us human beings, we see those letters, A to Z numbers, one, one up to nine and then zero, and then also we see other symbols, but all what we see is for just human consumption. Okay? So for the understanding of the computer, whichever we type using the human language is transformed into computer language, which we call machine language. And with the machine language, it is composed of one, a series of ones and zeros. Okay. Now, right, right now we are we know what a bit is and why is it binary is because a computer uses binary as its language. Okay, which is which is also called machine language. Hence, the smallest unit of measurement of data in a computer is called a bit. When we move on, of course there are other units such as after a bit, we have what we call a byte. When you talk about a byte, we are looking at a series of six or a group of eight, sorry, not six, a series of eight or a group of 80 bits is what we call 
a byte. Then, after looking at a byte, we have a character. Is it, how big is a character? Who can tell us? For example, I have letter A, if you're called a Keru. The first letter is A. How many bits are in that word a Keru? Let me look for somebody. We have somebody called Mbire, yes. That first letter M. How many bits are in that letter? No feedback. Yes, you are done on your microphone. Continue. I think there are five. There are five. Okay. That's according to her. Mm, who wants to say something different? I think there are eight. There are eight. Okay, that's according to her. Mm, we have... We have somebody by name of Rebecca. I have a sister by name of Rebecca. So when I, whenever I look at that name, I see my sister. Rebecca. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. How many, how many, for example, that letter R standing for Rebecca. How many bits? There are eight. Eight. Okay, there are eight bits. So each character is composed of 80 bits. So meaning if, if I may ask Rebecca, how many characters are in the word computer? So how many bits are in the word, in the word computer? How many are they, Rebecca? Actually, let, let each one of us work it out and tell us using the chart. How many bits are in the word computer? I'm waiting for the feedback. We're going to use the chat. So work it out and then let type in the chat. So we have 64. Remember, there are eight characters in the word computer. So that is, we shall say eight times eight, giving us 64 bits. Moving on, moving on, we have talked about a bit, a byte, then we have a kilobyte. What's a kilobyte? We talk about that's after a bit, we move to the, the next in size is a kilobyte, sorry, is a byte. Then after a byte, we have a kilobyte. And when we talk about a kilobyte, we are referring to 1,024 bytes, just like a kilo, okay? A kilo has, if you are measuring sugar or anything that is measurable, a kilo means 1,000, okay? In computing, it is, to be exact, it is 1,024 when we are measuring data. However, sometimes we approximate, we round off, Okay, and we say approximately 1,000 bytes. Mm, then from a kilobyte, we have a megabyte. It's the same as the way we get a kilobyte, it is 1,024 kilobytes. Then from a megabyte, unfortunately, most people when they are buying data, they think they are buying megabytes, okay, MBs. Maybe they are buying 1,024 MBs, I don't know. Okay. Then after a megabyte, we have a gigabyte, terabyte, petabyte, and so on. So as simple as that, you can, you can as well go investigate about the different units of measurement of data. Moving on. We have the basic components of a computer, okay? When you talk about components, there are so many components that constitute all that make a computer, okay? However, 
just like I, I said it before that my teacher told me that there are three body parts of an insect. Me up to now, I still contest it that they are not three. Maybe they just didn't use the right word, okay? To define what an insect is and how many body parts it has. Because personally, I, I, even when I, I look at an, an insect, I look at, first of all, they told us it has the head, thorax, and abdomen. However, on the head alone, I see other parts, such as the antenna, such as the compound eyes, such as some other parts. Then even when I go down to the next part, I see other components on it and so on. Similarly, a computer has what we call basic components. That is, if I want a computer, all I need are input components to enter data into the computer. I need memory where to store information. I need the processors to execute the information. I need the storage for permanent storage. I need the secondary storage for permanent storage. I need the output component, okay? But of course, you find that within, for example, input, I can mention so many, such as we have already talked about the mouse, I've talked about the keyboard, I've talked about the microphone, I've talked about different components or examples within the input component. Then we have storage. That is, we have, for example, I've talked about the CDs already, the DVDs, the what we call the miniature storage. We have the so many others, the USB sticks, we have the hard disk, we have so many, okay? Then when you talk about memory, we have got what we call the main memory, okay? But we can still categorize memory into, uh, for example, we can talk about cache memory, we can talk about the, even we, when we talk about cache memory, we have level one and level two cache, then we can talk about the registers, all those are storage components within the computer and so on and so forth, okay? Then talk about output again, we can list so many, okay? But as long as at least I have something, I'm able, to, I'm just good enough, I'm good to go. So I want you to investigate more about the components in the details of a computer, including what I've mentioned and what I've not mentioned. With all their functions. For example, when I talk about, let's have talked about a motherboard, what is its role? Okay. When I talk about maybe ports, what do they do? When I talk about expansion cards, what do they do? When I talk about anything I want to talk about, or I think of in you know, as far as the computer is concerned, what does the different, what do the different components do okay so i just summarized into the basic but there are so many components that constitute a computer mm, i think being the first day i may not need to take you so much since we are not yet used to you know Mm, while at high school, we are studying for about, is it 40 minutes? And yet here we are given three hours. So if I have some people are not used to studying for so long, but of course with time shall keep adjusting. So do you have any questions so far? In as far as today's lecture is concerned? Any questions? Any comments, any complaints, anything you want to say? Say it now.
Oh, somebody is asking about Kache memory. I talked about. Any other question, comment, complaint, sub addition, subtraction? Silence means no, everything is okay. Okay. So now, Kache, what is Kache? What is Kache for members? In case you know anything about Kache, can you let us know, members? Anybody that wants to say something about Kache? No one wants to share with us. Okay. I'm waiting. Kache, somebody wants to know what Kache is. You people, do you sell a fish? Why are you so selfish like this? You don't want to share with us? Yes, Serena. Temporary memory. It's what? Temporary memory. Okay. So Kache is is ties a tiny memory so tiny so when said when you say temporarily you are not exact because even ram is temporary okay but it is intermediate it is intermediate it is called intermediate is it the right word okay something being in between i think it is the right word okay between it's the memory between main memory and the processor that is used to bring back recently processed information to save the processor's time from waiting. For example, let me give an example. When you go to the to your browser, let's say Firefox, and type, let's say I want to, to let's say I type letter G. Okay. You'll find that when you type letter G, you'll get a pop-up with a list of options which start with G or which have G within them. Okay. If I want, assuming I wanted to check my mail and I typed G, among the options, I'll see Gmail, I'll see so many other options. So that I don't have to waste a lot of time. I just have to click on the options given and choose what I want. Okay. So I'll ask you to go investigate more about what cache memory is so that you have a better grasp of what it is. Somebody is asking, a machine language is composed out of, <laughs> okay, now machine language. I guess you are all doing programming since you are from the faculty of IT. Which programming are you doing? Is it structured programming? Systems programming. Which programming are you doing this semester? Class. Those doing either IT or computer science. It's Master. principles of programming. Principles of programming. You talk about languages, what you call high level language, machine language, and what? There are three. And what else? Those attending classes. High level languages. And low level language, okay? High level, low level, and machine language. Machine language is the language used by the computer. The way you speak Luganda, the way you speak, you speak Ateso, the way you speak Lugbar, the way you speak Runyankole, Ruchiga, Lusoga, ETC. For the computer, the language it speaks or it understands is called machine language. Machine language is just like the English language as 26. It has the alphabet. 
So its alphabet is what we call the ones and zeros, okay, binary. It uses binary language to speak, binary system to speak. I guess I've answered you. Then somebody in the chat is saying, okay, I've already read that. Anything else? Okay, so if no, if no more questions, no more additions, no more comments, no more complaints, we are stopping here for today. There is a, someone that said, thank you very much, you're welcome. There is a lady who contacted to me, who contacted to me, who contacted me today morning. I think she's the coordinator, if I'm not mistaken. Is she online? I'm forgetting the name. Yes, so. I am. Sorry? I'm on. This is Re oh, the Rebecca person who has the same name like my sister. Okay. Rebecca, mm, first of all, the, the, why we didn't have morning class, there was a miscommunication between myself and the coordinator, who is my sister. Mm, I was online by nine. She thought we are going to be physical and she had told me previously that we are going to be online. So that confusion there costed us. However, next week we shall meet. I think we shall meet online as well next week. When I feel, especially for fundamentals, there's nothing that needs us to meet physically. But for this one here, that is introduction to IT, we might maybe have some few physical meetings in the computer lab at block D. Now, regarding today's session that we are in right now, I have been recording the session. I will upload it on YouTube and share the link with the Rebecca, okay? So that those interested in case somebody want, want to recap, they're able to access the recording. So I think we can end here for today. Let's meet next week. Have a wonderful week and God bless you.